Did we just three body problem ourselves? Yes. Oh no. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My name's Josh. My name's Rick. And my name's Christian. And we are the, the judges. We are a three body problem between the three of us. If you really think about it, I've been thinking about it, and we really cerebral. truly are. That show is so cerebral. Mm-hmm. It just we came have out twenty minutes left of, of the, the first series? episodes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did, they, did they drop the, the whole series at once? The whole yeah, season? Yeah, okay. I finished it today. Yeah, we still... We... I'm jealous. It came, One. it came out yesterday. I know. I started watching it at 10 p.m. You, you He texted me at 2 a.m. like, man, I'm reading some crazy shit on Reddit. I'm, I want to talk to you about it, but I don't want to give you spoilers. And it's like, first off, it's 2 a.m. I'm not up. <laughs> Second off, hit me with the spoilers, Josh. I like I like a little spoilers. Well, you're reading the book, so you're gonna have spoilers anyway. Well, that's what got me to read the book is I got YouTube shorts about it. I was like, mm. whoa, that happens in this book. So I had to start reading it more. Yeah, it, um, the show is, from what I understand, pretty different from the book. Oh yeah, like multiple characters in the show are amalgamations of characters that don't even exist until like the third book. Mm. Which I watched it. Uh, like I said, I started it, watched it until like 2.30 in the morning, and then finished it today. And it was good enough for me to want to do that. Yeah. And it was a very cerebral show, and it was very interesting, and it was well done to a point. But it's the same creators of Game of Thrones. and I'm, So I was already going into it skeptically Yeah. Uh, because of how Game of Thrones ended. But it was good. Like, it was good. And then I started reading stuff about the actual book and, like, the plots there. And I could already tell they're going to fuck it up by season two. Like... There's there's that. already such a groundwork for like the way they did certain things where I'm like that's I don't know it's like they did with the White Walkers in Game of Thrones where it's like you just made them the bad guys and there's no like there's no it's just good guy bad guy war now yeah and the good guy win in Game of Thrones and it's just like ugh. spoiler alert yeah I, I hey, fuck you if you haven't seen <laughs> Game of Thrones so like I just hope they don't do that because the first season was good what well, I'm hoping it is similar to the first couple seasons of Game of Thrones where it's like they had a blueprint to work yeah. off of. I think that's where they were doing their best work. Is like they had something. I don't think that. Sorry, D and D or whatever the fuck your names are. Yeah. Sorry to tell you this. I don't think they're good at making original content. No. I think they are very good at taking something that already exists and shaping it into a like for TV format. Sure. Um, so if you haven't watched it, I would recommend it. I think it's a good show. Uh, it's a really good book, but a lot of Chinese names, so they're kind of hard. What was the character? What, what's the, what's the American oil character? What's his name? I always forget his name. It's like, it's just like Mike White. I don't or know. Some, whatever his name is. They, compared to how they did it in the book versus the show, they changed a lot about him and they kind of just made him like, kind of like, I mean, he's played by the actor who plays the High Septon in, uh, Game of Thrones. And so he kind of plays that exact same character where he's, like, kind of aloof, but, like, you can't tell if it's, like, powerful aloof. Yeah. But then it just, I don't know, it's just, like, compared to, like, what he does in the books, like, you just made him seem like a fucking old dude who doesn't know what he's doing compared to, like, a mastermind of, like, this whole secret thing. Oh, a lot like Joe Biden in and ways, huh? who <laughs> We don't just review shows on this podcast. Shows on podcasts on the podcast. What that entails is this. Go into our P.O. Box. Ottawa, Illinois, 5861350. And here's some mail for you guys to open up. One of those is probably meant to be for Erica. The okay. motherfucking judges. Nah. Your handwriting is incredible. It was probably the one that Christian has. Okay, switch me. The stamp is the Weber, the we, the the James Webb's telecoats. Tell us. Ah! You, you got it. Warning, relate, re contains shit related talk. Yeah, this one's probably for me, huh? <gasps> Beautiful stationery. Ooh, I love that stationery. You first. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? P.S. Prescript. Prescript. You can still, you can get, still pregnant. get pregnant from Prescript. Erica is my favorite. Should have not read that. <laughs> uh, and then, hello, judges. My name is Danny. Say my name. I dare you. I'm apparently late to the party and have been binging the pod for the last few months. This week I listened to an episode where you jerged around the circle about the classification of farts versus toots. Mm. Somewhere that in the 1940s. Oh, it's somewhere in... <laughs> somewhere in the... 
Somewhere in the one, the one forties. I, for, I forgot we had that weird time traveling era of our podcast, yeah. and we yeah. somehow decided not to stop Hitler. We thought hmm. talking about farts versus toots was more important. Yeah, it was kind of a. Um, oh, I had a cerebral joke, but I can't remember the name of the show. Eleven twenty three sixty something. So close. What's the James Franco show with the Stephen King book? Is it James Franco? Fahrenheit. Who's the other one? Four fifty one. It's James Franco. Dave Franco. It's not Dave Franco. It's not Dave. It's James. Uh, somewhere in the 140 episodes. Anyways, there's an important factor that you didn't bring up, so I thought I'd write in with my two cents. Okay. Eleven twenty two sixty three. I don't know what this is supposed to be because it does say two, and then there's parentheses and cents. Two cents. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'd uh, syllables. If the gas passes in one syllable, it's a two. <laughs> More than one syllable, uh, two has that ass cheek flap flap. That's a fart. And that's an and. Oh, it's an ampersand. Anyways, you guys are amazing. I constantly laugh until there are tears in my tears and my tummy cramps cramps up listening to you. Thanks for the cackles. Lots of love and giggle farts, Danny. Can I see? Look at the... Whoa. That circle is so... Did they draw that? The lines are immaculate. Yeah. Handwriting is incredible. Perfect circle? What the hell? Wow. That was Very cute. Wild. Stationary. Thanks, right. Danny. I do agree on your uh, thesis. We have a... Christmas card or holiday card for Megan, Michael, and Ruby. Yay. Uh, Fuck, we still have 2023 email. I hope this is the last two. I really fucked up when I thought we finished it off. Yeah, you really flexed with that. 12, 26, 23. Hi, judges. I'm Megan, longtime listener, first time mailer. You can say my name on the pod. Good. I already, I already did. If this letter is so lucky to be read during mail time. We had extra holiday cards this year, so of course I had to send one to my favorite Silly Goofy podcast group. I'm also of Midwest stock from Minnesota. I found the pod during fall 2021 and am finally caught up. I know that's a ridiculous amount of time, lol. You guys are just the best, and I love watching the pod and watching the pod at work, trying my best not to fall off my chair with laughter. The holiday card, my fiance and I are getting married September 28th of 2024 and i will hopefully remember to send the judges an invite hope you all had wonderful holiday seasons may 2024 be the pissiest year yet yeah i've been pissed p.s molly is such a gem and reminds me of my dog ruby who (laughs) also has radar Radar dish sized ear. Oh, <laughs> radar dish sized ears. As a real and is a Velcro reference. dog TM, which is a healer thing, I guess. Fun. Love y'all. PPS. Erica, I hope you enjoy the James Webb stamp. It's so freaking cool. And I'm also a huge fan. It is very freaking cool. What is a uh, Velcro dog? Just like Clingy. stuck to you. Oh. Clingy. This is a package that we got. Uh, to Molly Highsmith is who it was addressed wow. to. Unfortunately, We're not she, hyphenating her name? She cannot read. Um, I mean, no. Patriarchy. Mm-hmm. We already did the paperwork. The pup patriarchy. Patriarchy. Hmm. You can say my name. Hi, judges. Jenna here. First name, first time mailer, sometime submitter, long time Listener, new time Patreon member. Hey. <laughs> Patreon.com slash judges. Oh, weekly bonus I sent in the stories about the Christian campus group hazing called <gasps> Blanding and my fart that sounded like a police siren. I think about that. The Blanding or the fart? The fart. A lot, <laughs> I think about it a lot. Anytime a, a ambulance or a fire truck goes by, I always go, what the hell? Like as if I farted. <laughs> Especially the fire truck noise. I've got to come clean about something though. <gasps> and bonus episode one hundred and eighty eight. Christian and Erica roasted Josh saying he doesn't make anyone laugh. First of all, hilarious, but confession, Josh makes me laugh the most out of all the judges. <gasps> no! I- 
two have been the friend in my group who makes terrible puns, just say puns, and gets things <laughs> thrown at me while they shake their heads and groan. Keep being you and make us other weirdos. La- I'm not weird. Christian, I have to thank you. Thank for the cadence I now use when I say, what the hell? And dare I say, more soundboard? No. Erica, no feedback. You're perfect. Okay. Keep roasting men and throwing that carrot. Love you all. And the newest judgy Molly. Dear Molly, I've mailed you your very own carrot so you can throw it at Josh when you want to play. Here's a pic of my pup, Charlie. You can show her picture and say your name. Who is the reason I can't have my, any of my own stuffed animals? They all belong to her. Hugs and slobbery kisses to you. Love. Oh, <laughs> she's so cute. And let's see Molly's toy. You've kept this from her for this long? How are these supposed to know this? That big carrot. She's gonna get really confused with all the. Oh, it's got like an actual dog rope. It's actually a dog toy. I like that a lot. She's gonna get so confused because there's so many carrot shaped things in here now. Molly! And she's downstairs. She's been depressed because it's so cold outside. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jenna and Charlie. And we don't just open up Melon's podcast, Crystal Podcast, blah, 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 blah. go it online. Fun. Silly. Little. Big stories this, this week. That's first one right. is a big Erica. One. Big stories. I heard it through the grapevine. And by that, I mean I completely guessed. Do you know who sings that? Aretha Franklin. Nope. Who? CCR. Creedence Clearwater Revival? Mm -hmm. Huh. I mean, have you guys listened to them before the revival? Were they any good? Mm, Just when they were just CC? Yeah. (sighs) The revival is much better. Anywho, whoop de woo. This one is from um this is from Sonia, who sends this screenshot from R slash Am I the Asshole? Um, all written out. Sonia Soto de Mayor? Yes. yes. Our mutual on Instagram? <gasps> or is that the Chief Justice? That is the Chief Justice. Fuck. Am I the asshole because I don't want to spoil my stepkids? What a flex on the fucking political takeover there, Josh. Just like Oh, is that the dead person? Is Are they dead? I don't know. <laughs> Josh is dropping political on us, and Erica's going to get the fucking heat for it. I now. know. I always do. I always do. You're welcome, Joshua. I'll take y- the heat for you. Yes, you are the asshole, by the way. Me? No, the person who wrote oh. the title of the story. Yeah. I have a 14-year-old daughter from a previous relationship, and my wife has two sons, 16 and 13. I had a vasectomy after my daughter to make sure that I don't have any other kids. I spoil my daughter however I can. We read this. This includes branded clothes, expensive schools, and best electronics. And before anyone decides that my daughter is a brat, I should say that she is an extremely well-behaved kid. The problem is my wife and her ex can't afford the same for their sons. And they are angry that our kids have completely different living situations while living in the same house. That's pretty crazy. (laughs) My wife... pretty crazy. (laughs) My wife thinks I should not be spo- I should be spoiling her sons too, but I can't afford it. So I told her that's not my problem, and they have two parents who should be spoiling them. This is he said wife, right? This yes. isn't girlfriend. This Correct. is what they're your kids now, buddy. Wow, that sucks. You're a real piece of shit. Um, he has an edit here. I have been thinking about your comments, and I think you're right. I can't treat kids that live under the same roof differently so i asked my wife to move out of my house for now excuse me how how is that your solution we will try counseling and we will see how that goes but let me know (laughs) whoa the counseling actually worked what the heck uh but if i have to choose between her and my daughter it's always going to be my daughter she's not happy as she is a low-paying job and moving out means downgrading their lives yeah. That's crazy. Nobody was making you choose between your wife and your daughter. You made the choice. You're the weirdo. Yeah. He's he's seeing it as you can't treat them differently. And he says, okay, then they can leave. And I will continue to treat her like the princess that she is. Which she is. She's a queen. Sure. And princess and slay. That's wild. I mean, the kids are, they're, the kids are in the worst age, too. Because, like, they're not young enough to where they wouldn't notice, but they're old enough to where they notice and understand what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Like, if they were, like, eight, maybe a little bit younger, but if they were, like, six, it'd be like, John, what's going on here, bud? You got to figure it out. But they, they're, like, 
14. Yeah. (laughs) They know that their stepsister is getting so much better shit. Yeah. How long were they married for? Did I I say? I don't think he said. Dude, this is insane. Also, just to like throw your wife completely under the bus, be like, yeah, she has a low paying job. Like, what a piece of shit this guy is. Yeah. I feel like when you marry someone, you're combining your lives. You know, that includes like your lifestyles. Yeah. I also feel like if you wanted to spoil your daughter, you could still find ways to do it mm-hmm. and, you know, like give an equal amount of love at face value and then be like, oh, then I got you this little thing too. Is this for one of us just say that uh, his love language is just gift giving and then somebody yells at us for enabling Using love uh, languages? abusive behavior or something? Mm. Mm. Something, something. Get mad at us. And then leave the comment. Thank you. <laughs> Love languages is, aren't real, Josh. We do have to say, what about what about Italian, French? That's a romance language. Those are fucking oh. languages. <laughs> uh, episode one ninety nine, folks. Oh the next shit! One's the big one. Oh fuck. Uh, okay, that was excessive. <laughs> <laughs> I did not appreciate. I thought I I just wanted to try something new. I won't do it again. Mm. I might. Uh, we also have a YouTube short that's popping off, and it's a repost from like episode like ninety something, and uh, it's crazy to see. We got this when we first started posting our our vertical content. People see that Erica is reading a story, and then will comment shit about like Erica being a piece of shit, as if it's like, if it's as if my it's story, your story that I'm the one doing it. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> it's so funny because that happened when we first like whoever was reading. They'd be like, wow, you're an asshole for saying that. Like, I can't believe you posted this. And it's like, it's not us. <laughs> Do you understand? The, like, why Why would we be doing this with our phone if it was our story? Yeah. Well, you just want to get all the, the facts right. It's crazy how dense people can be in comment sections, man. Yeah. Right. Hey, it's going to be a sad day when TikTok goes away. Go follow us on all our other That's social. true. That's true. Go follow us on, go subscribe to us on YouTube. Go follow us on Instagram. Please, guys, TikTok is dying. <laughs> Vine 3? Who says no? Who says no? Advertisers? Oh, yeah. Fuck. This is from Danny. California? From before? No. Phantom. Oh. I want to help in your battle of new subreddits and push jo- put Josh in his place. I'm pretty sure I have new subreddits this year. I know, but I'm giving you a new subreddit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Danny is mistaken. Anyway, r slash rover pet sitting. Huh. Whoop. Whoop. Is a surprisingly dramatic and fun dive that I found myself spending more time on lately. There's some wild messes on here. Here's one that I enjoyed recently. Jo- oh, no. I was just thinking of, I've tried to find new subreddits, and the the likelihood of you finding a good one is so low. Yeah. I feel like I was trudging through just shit subreddit after shit subreddit. I mean, I found a whole other website to do an episode about, so... Maybe you're just do you do you want know. like a special reward? A little bit. Push a button. I'm just gonna mute Josh for a while. That makes sense, actually. It's a special reward for us. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, we actually. <laughs> Apologies in advance for such a long post, but I need advice about whether I let this go or do more to contact Rover. Several months ago, should we preface? Yes. I have a question, and I think you're about to answer it. What Rover is? Yeah. Rover (laughs) Rover is an app, kind of like Uber, where you can... It's pet sitting. Um, So you sign up on the app, and you can be somebody that, like, takes, like, dog walking or pet sitting. um, And you can find people to do that for you on that. Do you think you have to, like, read a ton of books to be eligible to be on the app? Mm. That way you can send Red Rover right over? I Thank thought you. that was really good. I didn't think that was very good. Erica said it. So Aurora's blowing up our group Snapchat and it's very distracting to me. Hey, head on over to Aurora's CreatureCorner.com, buy some stuff. Reach uh, creaturecorner.com? Aurora's Creature Corner. Dot com. Dot com. Uh dot shop. That's what Aurora's Creature Corner dot shop. Buy some stuff. That's why I asked. Anyway. Um, several months ago, I booked a sitter through Rover because my usual sitter was away. She seemed fine at first, but the red flag started when I dropped my dog off and I really, 
wish I just canceled my trip after feeling suspicious. Have I read this before? Nope. No. We promise. Not out loud to us. <laughs> okay. I think I would remember back to back that, that sick ass Red Rover joke that popped in my head yeah. immediately. See, this is why I don't fully read all of my stories ahead of time. Okay. Because now I I just feel like I've already uh, read this to you. I got gotcha. you. Anywho, it took her 10 to 20 minutes after texting her several times at our agreed upon time to meet me downstairs at her apartment. I also hate myself for not insisting upon seeing the inside of her apartment. I will never make that mistake again. That seems like a pretty important thing to do. Yeah. If you're like, it's one thing if you're letting somebody in your house because you know the situation, mm -hmm. but to drop a your fur baby off at someone else's Don't house. Don't call it a no, fur baby. No, thank you for understanding the situation here. <laughs> I'm not just gonna, there could be rat poison everywhere. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, her rover profile states that she did not have other dogs, just a cat. But when I was dropping my dog off, she mentioned that she had a puppy and asked if my dog gets along with other dogs. It's not a dog yet. It's just a puppy. I didn't lie. My dog is very friendly. I haven't had time to update my rover account. I just got the puppy. <laughs> I have a lot on my hands with this new fur baby. <laughs> fur baby fur baby. My dog is friendly, but he's old and doesn't like being jumped on, so he generally doesn't enjoy being around puppies. She promised she could keep the dog separate. I trusted her with my sweet pup, and each day she sent me at least one photo of my dog on walks enjoying himself. One adorable photo included him cuddling up with the other dog. It's cute. Sorry, with another dog, not the other dog. <gasps> when I asked worrying. about that dog, she said it was another dog of three that she was sitting, which was frustrating because her profile claimed to have no other dogs, but she clearly had several dogs in her home that she didn't warn me about well, before she, booking her. She didn't own the other dog. She's <laughs> yeah. watching the other dogs. I don't have them yet. <laughs> I do have to say it's kind of crazy. I get, I understand their frustration, but to be like, I would assume any dog walker, you're probably taking a couple dogs on a walk at once. Yeah, I, I mean that makes not the get most singular sense. Singular like, dog walks, unless you're really spending the money. Like, like it's like Uber Black or whatever. Yeah, business wise, that makes the most money sense. Rover you're getting, you're getting Uber Pool. <laughs> you're getting it. Oh, yeah, you signed up for yeah Rover Pool. Yeah. After my five day trip. I came to pick up my dog, and it once again took her at least 10 minutes to come meet me. When she came down, my dog's neck and chest were covered in shit. She said he just had an accident as they were heading out to meet me. But my dog never has accidents in the house. And even if he did, it doesn't make sense that it would end up on his neck. Yeah. She forgot his bed and bag of food, meds, and toys. So I had her go back up to get them. I don't know how to explain how strange her behavior was, but when she left to go get his other things, she told me to sit and stay as if I was a dog. That could have been a silly, goofy joke. That would have landed... If the dog wasn't covered in <laughs> shit, that would have landed so hard. She then apologized, saying she spends too much time with dogs, which I would almost be willing to understand, but it just seemed like she was not in the right state of mind. Oh. While my dog and I were waiting for her, someone from her apartment came out and asked me if I knew her because he thought she seemed like she was on drugs. He told me she had just been freaking out and told him my dog was being disrespectful. <laughs> when she came back down with some of my stuff, she forgot his bowls and toys, but I wanted to leave immediately. I could tell my dog was uncomfortable around her as he was hiding behind me and drooling and didn't seem to want her to pet him goodbye when he is usually so friendly. I contacted uh, Rover about this immediately, but they didn't seem to care. They didn't come right Man, over? Fuck you. Fuck you, Rover. All my homies hate Rover. I didn't even ask for a discount on the $350 stay because I wanted him to take I wanted them to take me seriously. <coughs> I didn't want them to think I was $70 making this up for a discount, but wanted them to recognize that I thought this dog sitter was a danger and should be kicked off their sight. They didn't want the photos of my dog with shit smeared on his chest, even though I offered and only <laughs> offered to block her profile from my account while they investigated the situation. Go ahead. So it turns So the, the I was looking up the CEO. His name is is Wade. 
So can we all just in the mic right now say, man, fuck Rover Wade. Huh? How about that? Fuck that okay. shit. Everybody on three. One, two, two three. three. Man, fuck, fuck Rover, Rover Wade. Wade. And this is his picture, and his name's Aaron, actually. I just needed to make the joke. But uh, um, that's why I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Let's get away until after this Rover Wade. You, so... <laughs> you didn't get it? I didn't get it the first time. That's all right. <laughs> Um, I have not used Rover since because this experience was so horrific and I just planned my trips in advance with my regular sitter. But today I looked her profile up on Rover and she still has an account. I think she's dangerous and at worst potentially got high and abused my dog by violently rubbing shit on his neck or at best lies about how many dogs she has or is sitting and doesn't take them out frequently enough. I will never book off of Rover again because of this experience, but is there something I should do to contact Rover again or try to get her kicked off the site? I feel really panicked and guilty when I think of any other dog being trapped in her care, but I also don't know what else is within my responsibility or capacity to do. I mean, is I mean, I guess I don't have extensive not knowledge of Rover, but is this not the thing where you leave them a bad review and then when other people are like choosing a yeah. Rover, it says on there like hey, my dog was covered in shit and she was a high on the fence. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, she definitely should have left a review, but I don't think she did. That's crazy, not leave a review. Do we think this scarred the dog? In it? Do we think it doesn't deal well with staying at strangers' houses anymore? I don't know. It's so hard with dogs sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes one thing will be like very traumatic, and then other times they'll go through like a crazy traumatic thing, and then they'll just look at you like they're the dumbest thing on the planet. Yeah. And completely forgot about it. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. I'm glad you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, do we think the dog went in a kennel often? Do we think it was just locked in a kennel and shit on itself somehow? Oh, like, maybe. Maybe. They write like somebody that doesn't kennel their dog. Why did you say it they like write, that? Like, why? Because <laughs> they do. They have an air about them. <laughs> okay. They have a hair about them. Mm. Of the dog? Hair of the dog. Do you want another rover pet sitting Ooh, story? Because I mean, Danny sent right another here. one. If we got one right here, let's freaking... I love it when people send screenshots and not just the link. Makes it so much easier for me. That makes it much worse for me. Yeah, I would prefer to have the uh, the link. I do like having both because a lot of times things get deleted on Reddit a lot yeah, now. That's why I said not just the link. I don't know when this started happening. Reddit used to not. Nobody deleted shit on Reddit. It just stayed up there and it just went into the ether. It started happening when the, this kind of thing got popular. Yeah. These fuckers. Thanks to us. They get deleted by our bit. for karma limits and all that stupid bullshit. Which is such an insane thing. A yeah. karma limit? Having two, oh, you posted too good on the social media yeah. website? Well, they ascend. They've reached the last tier of uh, Dharma and Karma. Mm. Boo. Do we think... That's not even a joke. That's just a religion. Do we still... Is there still the theory that Jelaine Maxwell was the number one Redditor? No, she was. That's not a theory. There you go, Jelaine. <laughs> That's the one good thing. Get that thing real did. clear on the mic. We got Rover Wade <laughs> <laughs> and pro Jelaine Maxwell on this. Well, in this one aspect. She, <laughs> I just don't. I don't support her in any other way, Josh. <laughs> I don't think you have to hand it to her for anything. She's a Nepo baby. Does yeah, that change your mind? That changes a lot. Her dad was like a big time famous piece of shit. Does that on the internet? Your mind? He's British. That changed my mind a lot, <laughs> even more. Did you know that she's British? No, I didn't know that until I was watching the Jobbery doc. It makes sense with how fucked up her name is. Where? Why is there a silent S in it? Why is there an H in it? <laughs> Thoughts on uh, Jelaine Maxwell? She's a piece of shit, and I hope she dies. Yeah, it's crazy how she hasn't, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, I can't have a little tangent without being in the doghouse here. I didn't say you couldn't. I can feel it in the air. Hair of the dog. Okay, Phil Collins. This is also from r slash rover pet sitting. Um, disgusting experience. We'll never use any pet sitting service again. I, do we think it's that strange? Do we think that's an overreaction? No. 
that to, Rover's bad? No, like never use any pet sitting service ever mm. again. Like, what's your alternative? Leaving it's him at your home fur alone? baby, Josh. Leaving him home alone. Can I just read the story Kevin and we'll find out? Kevin O'Connell style. Kevin McConnell. Kevin McConnell. No. Home Alone. Mm-hmm. Kevin O'Leary. McAllister. Kevin O'Leary. What? Mr. Wonderful. Ever heard of him? No. McAllister. I was making this a Shark Tank guy. It's Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> Didn't he offer to buy TikTok? I'm sorry, Erica. The Judges TikTok? Yeah. 90- and because of that <laughs> offer, you can get one. V- what do we. <laughs> How much? How much of the judges are willing to give up to Kevin? One judge. <laughs> I vote it's not me. I was gonna say one fifth ownership of the judges, but I want to give him less than well, that. What do you want to value our company at? Trillion dollars. Yeah, at least. Okay, I feel so you, so you, so if you bought twenty percent of a, of our company, no, we said a fifth. But that's twenty percent. <laughs> chill. <laughs> <laughs> we can't let Kevin see we're bad at math. So if we if he buys a fifth of our company and we're valued at a trillion, that means that we would get two hundred billion dollars. Yeah, sounds and you great. Think that's not a fair trade for twenty percent of our company. No, that isn't anywhere close to seven Shut figures. The <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's a good trade. Okay. I don't know how the Shark Tank works. Do we have to give that money back? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm starting a new dog walking app, and it's not called Rover. It's called something funnier than that. It's called Grover. Nice. My significant other and I took a long weekend trip and hired a pet sitter off Rover with only good reviews. Albeit, 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 albeit. I think that's the breed of a dog. <clears throat> albeit a low count. The agreement was a 30-minute drop-in every other day for a total of two hours across four days. So they're going to drop in for 30 minutes. Every other day? Every other day for a total of two hours across four days. Okay. We asked that they feed the cat, give her some attention, but don't worry about the litter box and don't let her on the hutch. Oh, it's a cat. We also disclosed that we have a Furbo pet camera that we can check in on. The first day of our vacation, we get a text asking if we were gone. Shortly thereafter, our pet sitter walks in with bags of something on the counter. Our pet sitter moved in, moved in the moment we left, taking advantage of the residents and spent the majority of the time naked, rubbing themselves all over our objects. Huh. Okay. I, so, yeah, I don't think I would ever use a pet sitting app yeah. ever again. <laughs> That one would really fucking scar me. That's so bold. Like, yeah. you don't even... Like, Furbos are loud and visible. Like, you didn't even scout for one. Unless they <laughs> like getting off on it. Like that. I think they probably do. Candles were lit and ignored while they spent hours... Romantic. ...rocking on the couch. Again, naked. We were very clear on the days we were gone. And when we returned, my significant other went in our house first as our pet sitter was naked in the living room. While they were getting home. Yeah. Our pet sitter grabbed her belongings, then ran out of the house, apologizing profusely. I immediately cleaned the, out the fridge of her delivery orders and all the cat feces from the kitchen garbage that permeated through our kitchen instead of being left alone in the litter box. Each day we are finding something new that the sitter had done that is unacceptable for even a house guest to do. We asked very simple things of the sitter. Feed the cat, give the cat some attention, and leave the litter box alone. The cat wasn't fed and was ignored, and the litter box was moved in an awkward location outside the bathroom. Instead, our sitter spent most of the time dressing up in my significant other's clothes, using their beauty products in wasteful excess, and... We keep finding our personal things in random locations in the house, as well as the pet sitter's clothing in strange areas through the house. We're thankful we were able to surprise the pet sitter when we got back because we felt the sitter would take things out of the home. I have a lot of tech in my office that belongs to my employer, and if stolen, would immediately be a legal issue beyond a civil case. We already have thousands of dollars worth of damage and loss from the sitter's neglect. Thousands? From neglect, it's different if she damages shit to be like, 
from their neglect is crazy. Thousands of dollars of damages? We suspect that the intent the entire time was for our property to be used as a personal nudist retreat and exploit the intent of pet sitting services. The amount paid for food delivery services exceeded the profit the sitter would have made. Our young cat is very sweet and loving and was incredibly stressed and refusing to eat. During this event from being neglected and barely fed. Our kitty recovered quickly and getting fresh food from the pantry and refreshed bottled water that we have next to her bowl. We now have someone entering our backyard at night, leaving the gate open as they leave, which is a new situation that started since we left for vacation. Interesting. That's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, How fucking wild. Do we think maybe they just a little bit kind of deserved it because they're using bottled water? Uh, hate the environment much? I see what you're saying. Yes, we use. I was. I thought you were giving them shit for like giving their cat bottled water. Yeah, but like we use the water Filtered store water. water. Yeah. Right. Well, apparently we have fucking lead in our water. Yeah, I, I know. just got the mail today. Yep. On top of the arsenic in my yard. I and... love how they just send out mail that's like, "Hey, by the way, we found lead in some of the people's town's water. Won't say who." And the, <clears> just because <throat> you got this letter doesn't mean you have it, but you might. Yeah. And also, it might not be a city water issue. It might be because all of our pipes are so old. It's probably <laughs> it's probably in your house. It's actually not the city water. <laughs> when we check it coming right out of our cleaning facility, it's actually super clean water. It's, it, it, it's not an issue with any of the pipes throughout the city. Can I take a guess when they found out that there might have been lead in the water? When, the everybody, when everybody complained that it was fucking brown water? I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, the was like last week when my sewer just randomly backed up for like 35 minutes they mm-hmm. probably like turned off a water source somewhere to fuck with it yeah probably god fucking pisses me off. we had uh somebody that was running for state senate or state representative or something came and knocked on my door at like nine o'clock in the morning last weekend or the weekend before and she she was from like up by dekalb so she's like not even from the this little region yeah. and She's like, what are some issues, you know, you're passionate about? And I was like, um, how about the fact that my fucking water's brown and the city's telling me that it's probably my water heater, even though it's only on the cold water, (laughs) it's only on cold water and (laughs) multiple other people in the town have had the same issue and are posting about it on Facebook and the city's ignoring us. How about the fucking arsenic in my yard? And if my yard has so much arsenic in it and I live a, you know, a mile from where this situation happened, you don't think the entire town's contaminated? Yeah. What about the park that my kid's gonna play in? And I she was just like, "Oh parks. wow, that yeah." If I have it in my yard, do you not think that the three schools that surround our house are gonna have it in their playgrounds? Yeah. That's wild. Also, the fuckers said that they were gonna do our house first, and there's a house down the street here that's got it done already. What the fuck? One, it was they, very funny. They have two babies. Have you thought about that? Their yard no. is very small, and our yard has already been constant headaches for the people. So That's, yeah, their yard was very small, and our yard is gigantic. We have bees that might be endangered bees, so now we have to get a special bee expert to come <laughs> look but at our yard. With this r- recent cold spell, I haven't seen the bees, so <sighs> yeah, it's not a good sign. Um, bad, but good. Yeah. Bit more like bitter bittersweet. Yes. That's, bitter cold. Hey, maybe we'll be sponsored by a beekeeping company. Sure. Bye. Bye. See you on the next side of the pod. I'm mad at him. Okay. I, as long don't, as we're don't, don't, I, yeah, no hatred this way. A lot of vitriol between C and J <laughs> over here. Circle Church, Christian Josh. Hello, fuckers. Circle Church, Circle Church, Circle Church, What the hell? It's the Circle Church. What do we got, bud? Welcome to the side of the podcast. <laughs> this week we have a Circle Church coming straight to us from a listener. Whoop. Hi, Juggles. I can you read that? Did I Juggles? That says Juggles. Juggalos. It just says juggalos. Can we paint our faces and be juggalos? No, thank you. Can we? Can we? Instead of instead of drinking Fago, can we do like Mountain Holler as Ooh. our as the juggalos drink? Doctor Thunder. Okay. Is there a knockoff root beer one funny name? 
I have no, no idea. Way. Spretzer is that? That's the Br- fancy one. That's the like Wisconsin made. Oh, you're right. You're right. Sarsaparilla. Uh, yes, you can use my name. I'm Sienna from Kansas. Hello. After one of your most recent Circle Jerks, talking about sentences that have never been said before. My best friend Amari gave me the idea to send in my track list. It's a list I started in college because I had a friend who would always just say, that's a track, after someone said something insane. I've been building it for nine years now. The list was made mostly during nights out drinking, but I've had to edit a lot out. The OG list was like at least five times as long as this one, and I knew if it was too long, Josh would yell at me. I was frowny face. I had a yell cocked in my throat. (laughs) Here's the track list. I <laughs> I can't wait for Anthony Serrato to cut that. Um, means for sure. I just want you to see how long the list was already. Yeah, I read them all already. So you read all of them? Yeah, it was a funny email we got. It okay, well, why don't I just read them all by myself at a different time, and we'll just skip this whole thing, pick it, a new one. That's how the sh- <laughs> show works. That's how the production of the show works. What are we talking about? <laughs> Just yeah. being silly, goofy. We had a, a similar thing when we were in college. Remember the quote wall? Mm-hmm. It was usually Rob saying funny shit. <laughs> it was usually Rob echoing shit that Christian said. You know what? I think I still have all the quotes. I should get them out. I was say, we so like them post-it somewhere. notes? It was no. scraps of paper. <laughs> scraps of paper, and we just taped them to the wall above the garbage can. <laughs> a poor man's post-it note, really. Yeah. yeah. I think we should bring back bullying. I feel like this has been said on this couch by someone. Me? Yeah. What? There's certain types of bullying that can come back. (laughs) Don't worry. I have a Hummer. Yuck. Who drives a Hummer? Low job. Okay. I'm back on board. Mm -mm. You have the perfect That's a humdinger. No, that's when you hit a baseball real good. (laughs) I... You have the perfect body for (laughs) No, that's a Homer. (laughs) No, that's a Simpson. Oh, that's OJ. <laughs> no, that's a breakfast drink. Holy fuck. No, that's a mimosa. Oh, that's a Mimi. <laughs> that's a Mimi. Holy that's, that's a, a Mimi. Mori. <laughs> that's a Mari. Holy oh, fuck. Back to the list. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> How's it feel to be cut off that much? I was, Erica, I was fucking hooting and howling over here with you, yes, and in so hard. <laughs> I never get to yes, and. Susan, I'm not good at it. Sir, yes, and in. Anything there? Yeah, I <laughs> We're actually... Mute his mic can again. You, can you push that button? No. Yeah. Yeah, I did like that. We're never going to get through this list. The Father, the Son, and the Holy. No, no, no. Yeah. If you really loved me, you'd be a worm. That one was very good. I like that one a lot. I want to lick it off her platonically. Hmm. Did you just ash in my... Uh, tapioca. That word, my brain cannot process. Tapioca. I saw the word. And I went. I know that word. Mm-hmm. And then my brain was like, "Come on, buddy, just sound it out." And then I was like, mm. "You know what? I, I'm never gonna get. I got ADD, guys. I, we've been Olson's big into books right now, and I've been reading children's books to him, and I'm realizing that I do. Um." Uh, like the predictive reading where I'm just like, I'm using context clues. And I'm like, I'm not even fucking reading the pages. And it's like, I really. In a children's book? I should. Yeah. Well, you have to realize every page you have this long to look at the entire page to read it. So it's like. Oh, he wants to turn the page immediately. Oh, okay. 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 But it's like, so I'm just like trying to read. It and then it's like, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is why I don't know how to read is because I'm literally just like. Okay, I know what that says. I didn't even yeah. read the sentence. I'm just making up the sentences as I go. Sure. <laughs> it explains a lot. It explains why I uh, paraphrase so much, because I'm just like, I'm not even reading the sentence. I'm just like, ah, I got the gist of it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It sucks, guys. Kayaking with my sluts. Mom, you're going to be fucking cremated. Who cares what's crawling all over you? Whoa. You- <laughs> oh. Jeanette McCurdy and spell. You know me. I'm not corporate. Fuck with that one. The only taste on thine tongue is of that of victory. That's, that's Come, that's hands free. Oh no, I hate pig roast. The goose calls. The goose call stays on during sex. That's kind of hot. The goose calls. 
the goose call stays on during sex. Is that an American themed vape? That has to just be like a nicotine vape, right? No, flavored vapes are American. Have you flavored. seen the new cool vapes? No. No. They're like they're just like little squares with like digital OLED screens on them that like play games and shit. <laughs> you like Dude, you that's can have so, games on your vape. <laughs> that's so sick. And you're you're saying they're not targeting kids. I was kids. Gonna say, and it's not for kids. Everything targets kids. Let them vape. Let them blow out their lungs. No, don't don't vape. Don't smoke. It's oh, not this? cool. Oh, this that's an old church injury. Uh, that kid could back a greasy stick up a goat's ass. That sounds easy. Is but that the, is that an insult or a compliment? A compliment. I feel like if you see someone that's like, oh, that's a farmer. You know that boy could stick a stick up a goat's ass. A greasy stick. I think that makes it easier. That's what I'm saying. Is it's not? I feel like it, it's not very impressive to do. Emotionally, right now, Josh, my nipples are chafed. I like that one. Taylor has a thing for a carpet, which I feel that I have. You guys ever just laid down on a carpet and kind of just embraced it? Yeah. Yeah. Most literally. Remember when we got the carpet replaced in our house, and I was down in Carbondale, and I was I we were on the phone, and I was like, "Did you just lay down on it yet?" He was like, no. Why would I fucking lay down on the carpet? It's new. It's brand new. You just lay down. It's got good pilling. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't do it for me. What a piece of shit this I know. guy is. You believe this guy? I Fuck know. First you, he buys rat. the house without telling worse. you. Then he replaces the carpet without laying on it. Then it's his fence all of a sudden. Have I'm we... hitting all the greatest hits for Christians. Stuff. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Don't forget to tune into the bonus episode. If you really want to see this boy get lame bastard. <laughs> Did I tell the story about you buying the house on the pod? No. No. Time is, well, maybe we'll talk about time. it on the bonus episode. Maybe next week. Because uh, it was a lot of drama. Here, I, oh, I'm i not even halfway through this list, guys. We're gonna, you don't have to read it all. Predictive text. We're going to just... We're, we're just, just going to... Reading. Cigarettes and yelling, fuck you, rat. When in doubt, use your foreskin. Piss in the candlelight. Communist okay, wait, against Jesus? Okay, wait, because this is all... You're saying it so fast, it all feels like one sentence, and I'm like... Piss in the candlelight. Is this a Beck song? Also, pissing in the candlelight... It, Taking a bath in candlelight, nice. Pissing candlelight, nice. Taking a bath in the sunlight, very nice. If you got a window in your bathroom, don't even turn on a fucking light during the day. Leave all the lights off. Take a shower and have just sunlight coming in. It feels nice. It's a little dark sometimes. <laughs> but the sun feels good. What? If you've got a shower orange, oh. I do just wonder, man, how, how frequently are we bathing? What do you mean? Like, why are you bathing enough to have th- to have <laughs> to have like notes on how to do it? <laughs> what do you talk? Sometimes, <laughs> listen. Sometimes you screw up your routine, right? Yeah. It's like I normally shower at night. Well, we got home late, and now I'm too tired, and I don't want to do it, so I'm just gonna go to bed without showering. But okay, now I'm gonna shower in the morning. Okay. Still screwed up my routine. Showering's fine by my, for me over here. Um, okay. Then what's the issue? Bathing. Uh, laying into a tub gotcha <laughs> gotcha 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 i wish i bathed more than i do josh can i be honest about it yeah no, i've done it thrice in the last decade okay you just you i can tell you wish you did it more because you talk about it a lot yeah i do and i wish i did if you i feel <laughs> i'm trying to work on a unibomber bath bomb christian type beat over here <laughs> Concerning. Christian goes postal in his bathtub. Call that a bath bomb. Okay, that's actually fucking sick. Is that a bar of soap? That, that no, was a bar. I didn't of like soap. it. I said no because it wasn't very clean. Room temp smoothie. That sounds terrible. One less goatee. Go. Goatee. One less goatee. It's actually goatee. Well, my brain was reading goatee. Uh, I don't drink hard kombucha unless I'm slacklining. That's such a slackliner thing to do. That just What's, like felt very heather. Is that like is slacklining like a fishing thing? No, you know what slacklining is? It's you tie two ropes. You tie a rope between two trees, and it's got a little slack to it, and you oh. bounce around on it. It's not necessarily a rope. It's a specialized slack. It's a lot slackline. It's I would. It's it's more similar to a strap. Sure. Which? It's got some elasticity in it. Arguably. 
It's is just wider for your rope. foot. Oh, like a like a ratchet strap. Like a ratchet strap. If you ever need a shoulder to cry on, my dick game is mad decent. I'm over this, if we're being honest. Fuck, you're gonna yelp an abortion clinic? <laughs> That's actually really <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> Read the last one. They always save the best for last. You guys definitely crushed can- cans wrong, and I can tell. Dildo swagging. I can't read that one. Best ones for last. What do you mean you can't read that one? As as in it was inappropriate or you... Physically. It was, it was real tapioca situation. Tapioca situation. Okay. Bish rec... I mean, can... B-I-S-H-R-E-K-S-U-A-L. Bish Reckle? I guess he can't read either. Huh? Now I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, the, not reading. I'm it. not the only fuckhead now. <laughs> I had to hear. I you. get a big old boner when the U.S. cable USB cable goes in right the first try. Does that I be don't. Kind of fucking hot. Is that a hot take? I prefer it give me three tries. You like edging a little bit. If You're I go a on fucking the, gooner if over I there. go in on the first time on a USB stick, I still pull it out because I feel like I did something wrong. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way. I definitely jammed that in the. Wrong I forced direction. that one in right. Uh, last one here. You're lucky that wasn't televised. You happy I read the last one? You guys are my <laughs> one allowed pair of social relationship, and I wouldn't trade you for the world. I love you so, 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 so much. Love, Sienna. Lip, I, lip. What happened to Amari? That was her friend that's saying all uh... the things. My brain is going at a million miles an hour, Josh. Why aren't you happy about this, Erica? Why are you also mad at me? <laughs> You need to calm down. What? I'm I should have had the freaking root beer. I'm you, wired. You had caffeine fruit free root beer. And caffeine. Now you're, you're yeah. up all night. The Barks is giving me a little bit of a bite. Oh. Barks has caffeine. That explains a lot. Yeah. They add caffeine to Barks. Don't let kids don't tell your parents. Thanks everyone for sending in your listener submitted sounds. If you want to do that and be featured, we don't play any of them on the bonus episode. Uh, so if you do send a listener submitted sound, eventually it will probably get played on the main feed episode. Do that at judgespot at gmail.com. Title it listener submitted sound. This one is from. And we always play them before the listener submit stories, by the way. That's the whole thing. I really hope we haven't played this one before. Hello, Josh Hicker, Christian Aurora. And Josh again, because they love you that much. Wow, Josh, so nice. Tis Viv, I have returned. Thanks, Viv. No story this time, but a sound. I recently quit my job and have free time to go throughout the rain through. I have the free time to go through with these random ideas. This This is is my first attempt at a song type thing. I hope you enjoy. Twist it, bop it, motherfucking butt rock it. Bye, Viv. Thank you, Viv. P.S. T.Y.B. Uh, that's your bit. It's Thank some, you, bye. No, it's bitch, isn't it? It's Viv, what's Viv's thing? Taste your bitch? Don't no. forget to taste your bitch? Tell your bitch. Tell your bitch. Tell your bitch. Bitch, what the fuck? Bitch, what the fuck? Bitch, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Bitch, what the fuck? Bitch, what the fuck? Bitch, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Tell your bitch. Tell your bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitch. There it is. Do you think TCYB is tell... Courtney. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Do I TCBY, think why, huh? I think it probably <laughs> is because you made it up on the spot and yeah. I've never heard of it before, you know right? What TCBY now. is? The no. country's best yogurt? Huh. I haven't thought about that since 2004. That's when the last one closed. So yeah, I was gonna say since it closed and turned into a Taco Bell, I haven't thought of it. What happened to Quiznos? There's one left. I think there's like a single one left. They spent too much money on that weird fucking commercials they had. We love these songs. Cause they are good to us. I have a story from um a woman. Give me a name. Janelle. From Janelle. Um, hey Ricky, you said in the most recent bonus episode that you ran out of stories from your DM, so I feel inclined to send you some juicy high school gossip since it's my senior year and I don't give a toot. 
That's kind of badass to not even give a freaking two. I went on a trip to Europe through my high school this past summer, and as you can imagine, when 50 dehydrated and sleep-deprived kids are together, shit goes down. It was revealed on the trip that my guy friend had a crush on me. <gasps> if you want to hear about that, no. let me know. Not really. It doesn't seem like it's going to be an interesting story. Now, does that come out because they're dehydrated? I don't get how de- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you haven't seen episode two of The Three-Body Problem. Excuse me. I was oh. wondering how they're going to do that. Continue. Okay, so basically back in June, I went with some of my friends and classmates to Europe on the first night in Rome. <gasps> we were just in Rome. No. I found out from a friend wow, this is crazy. who we'll call Pablo that one of my close guy friends, we'll call him PJ, had a pretty obsessive crush on me. Private jet for long private jet for long i had been suspicious for a while but preferred to live in ignorant bliss don't we all oh this sucks the message where she said let me know if you want to hear this story and i said no it sounds boring this is now that story yeah huh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry janelle don't be rude joshua this story better knock my freaking socks off. I was, of course, upset about this news because I quite enjoyed being friends with him and was now questioning whether or not uh, he genuinely wanted to be friends with me or was just wanting, waiting to become my boyfriend. Another issue in this situation was that I have a girlfriend. <gasps> she was extremely upset that it seemed like he was actively trying to date me behind her back. Yeah. Throughout the trip, he would try to hang out with me and my girlfriend when we wanted alone time. When we, when I would try to politely ask him to go hang out with everyone else, he would guilt me by saying, oh, well, if you don't want to hang out with me, just say it. Then when we did want to hang out with him, he would say, no, you probably are just saying that and then not oh, hang out with us. Dude, Dude, high schoolers suck so much. Yeah. I started to tell some of my other guy friends about his behavior and they immediately knew. One night they were trying to tell him that his behavior was a nuisance and he legit called his mother crying. This is a common theme with him. Eventually, oh, no. towards the end of the trip, I had finally had it with his behavior. In Prague, on the second to last day, I finally said to him, PJ, I know you have feelings for me. I feel like I can't be friends with you if you do, because I don't know if you really want to be my friend. I think it's best if we don't talk for a little while. Perfect. So we worked out, we worked out that maybe a month of not talking would be good. But towards the end of Marriage that month, counseling maybe? <laughs> he broke no contact to ask me to go to brunch with him. I obviously took this as a sign of him not being over me, so I didn't reply until the full month was up. Why are you going to brunch if you can't even drink alcohol? But then it's also like you're rich as fuck going on like school sponsored multi multi country Country. European trips. So I guess you can just afford to do brunch as a teenager. Not all brunch has to involve alcohol, Josh. What's the point? Don't invite me (laughs) to eat brunch food. Which you want is... a little bit of breakfast and a little bit of lunch. What's what's like a what's a brunch food that you lose your chicken shit and over? waffles? That's a breakfast food. I'm sorry, that's not a brunch food. That's a breakfast food. I don't think about chicken and think breakfast. You're I not think... from the south. Neither are you. Yeah, but I have I have roots in the south. Okay. So when I think chicken and waffles, I think breakfast. Or I think uh, or Mama and Peepa. During the summertime, right, no, no, it's genuinely, like, what's a what's like a br- a brunch food that's more lunch than breakfast? A breakfast burger. Yeah, oh, that was about the only. See, that's one. just lunch to me. I don't know how I'd eat that for breakfast or brunch. I'd eat it for brunch. All I'm saying is, I need a mimi in my hands, or else you ain't gonna see me at the brunch. And I'm gonna need a blomo in my hands, <laughs> or don't even invite me no mo. <laughs> I got plans. <laughs> uh, Courtney and I did like a paint and sip last week. I hope from a different glass. You don't want to drink the paint. Paint with the wine. What's the matter? My fucking water's got lead in it anyway. <laughs> and I live in a house built before 1940, so it's fucking got lead paint in the walls. No, you can give me It the, doesn't anymore. We got rid of all of it. You can give me the leaded pastel. I built up a towel already. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it was a paint and like coffee. So we we started this at like 10 o'clock in the morning and we went out to lunch afterwards and I had like four Bloody Marys. That's so many. That's I a know. lot of Bloody it Marys was, for lunch. They were so good. They were so good. 
It was like the best Bloody Mary I've had in a long time. And Christian's parents were watching Olsen. And then like 10 minutes after Christian's parents left, Christian showed up. And we're just like giggling watching Olsen run around. Sure. And Christian's like, are you too drunk? It's like three o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday. Christian's a stickler about drinking on a weekday as well. He is. kind of am. But it was fun. Anywho, it's my little aside about a recent blow mo experience. I'm more of a a stickler about me drinking. No, you put a stink in the air about drinking. You do. Whenever you do. What? It's a thing, really? Yeah. Yeah. Is this my biggest flaw? (laughs) Yes. Oh, Josh, I fall for the bait. That's so crazy. Well, what, you just said biggest. It's your only flaw. So <laughs> oh, I guess you. by default. I thought that was really good. <laughs> uh, I also put off meeting with him for as long as I could. When we got our schedules for the new year, he somehow had almost every class with me, and I only had one class with any of my other friends. That's important to note because his mother works at our school. His mom's the guidance counselor. Since the incident, I have taken pity on him. More like the Crydon's council. And become friends with him again because I was kind of his only friend. But he constantly brings up what happened in the summer and almost shames me for it. I've realized that due to this and other another circumstance that I won't say now for fear of this being too long, I no longer want to be friends with him because it is exhausting. Yeah, then don't. don't. So yeah. would I be the asshole if I told him we can't be friends anymore? Mm. Or should I just wait out the next two months until graduation? No, nah, just tell him. Let me know if you want the rest. I just feel bad because that was a lot. It really wasn't that much, but. It was too much. I'll tell you the Christian route. Wait it out. Two months is going to fly by. Also, yeah. you have classes with him. So it's like, oh, only one. God, I'm fucking take him out. No, it's every class. Every class except, except one. one. Oh. Which, so it kind of oh, sucks. Yeah. So I say wait out because I'm also lazy. But the appropriate adult thing to do would be just cut it off. You're in high school and he's a guy and you're a gal. So all you have to do is give one public stink about it and he'll never talk to you again. You don't know that. Yeah. He could also bring a gun to school and try to shoot everybody. Well, fuck yeah, he could. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, this is this is one of the hardest things about being a woman sometimes, is when yeah. you try to reject a man who has clearly been obsessed with you for however long and is manipul- manipulating your surroundings, like getting in all of your classes and whatnot, it's hard to be like, let, yeah, I'm just going to publicly shame you for <laughs> trying to hit on me. And then the next thing I know, I'm shot in my classroom. Sure. It's a it's a genuine fear that women have. I'm not trying to bring down the mood because it was yeah, no, silly goofy. no. Don't worry, it's really high. Uh, the mood that is. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying that it is it. a lot harder to turn down men, especially as a young woman in that situation. So I understand if you just stick it out, but I also understand if you tell them to fuck off. Why the hell were you having to turn down men? <laughs> 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 Christian yeah. pulls a gun out. <laughs> what the hell? Um, yeah, I mean, we're all in agreement here that we would all ride it out. <laughs> all three of us would just be like, oh. I want to be the bigger person and be like, no, you got to take action. But you, there's no way am I doing uh, that. You wouldn't be the at. This is why we're not an advice podcast. Yeah. Because I tell you to call him out, and then Erica says the guy's going to shoot you. I'm not saying that he's going I don't to. Know, that's actually some good advice. I feel like if he listens, you have now given him advice to do that. I'm Ooh. not saying that he should do that, Joshua. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. I was, was going <laughs> to reset. I almost reset it like that. Um. So yeah, you wouldn't be the asshole if you did, but you're no. also not the asshole if you don't. Yeah. Hey, well put. No assholes here. Maybe. I don't know. Don't go to brunch anymore. I feel like that's the biggest issue. The, the issue here is brunch is until brunch. you're 21. <laughs> you're gonna ruin the magic. Fake. That's true. You don't want to get out. You don't want to out brunch yourself before you hit the mm-hmm. the brunching age. Yeah, you're still at a breakfast age. You're gonna hit your brunch years in your early 20s, and then there's gonna be a time where you don't even realize it slipped right past, you and you're at lunch. Sometimes you're at dinner or supper, and you don't even really know the difference. You don't know when it goes from one to the other. If you're Is doing, there a difference? If you're doing brunch right, it's all day, baby. Goes into night. Brunch is really just a mindset. I'm t- Listen, 
I am just a pretty anti-breakfast food guy relatively in general. They're just not my favorite things to eat. Do you like biscuits and gravy? Yeah. Christian makes such good biscuits and gravy. Interesting. He's never made it for me. Hmm. I like waffles. I like okay. biscuits and gravy. Not that I eat it regularly, obviously. Um, and then, like, cereal's fine. But, like, eggs. I eat eggs because they're okay for you or whatever but i they just taste too much like egg you know what i mean sometimes if i pay too close to attention mm -hmm. i do realize that it tastes like egg and it grosses and like, me out I, like i don't like granola i don't like yogurt so i can't do any of that kind of stuff oh. have you just tried have you just tried the right kind of yogurt have you tried too? combining them that's what i mean is i've never done like the over because like yogurt is just gross to me every flavor and type of yogurt i don't like the sourness of it but y'all bitch at me when I say I don't like mac and cheese. And because I have tried you... every kind and every flavor of mac and cheese and it's all fucking gross. But when Josh says he doesn't no, like yogurt, it's fine. Because your, sta your stance is ridiculous because you eat cheese and macaroni separately. But when you put them together, it's bad somehow to you. Okay, and? And I'm telling you I don't like granola, yogurt, or when they're combined. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like I like granola bars, I guess. But mm. when they have yogurt in them, here don't we like go. Them. Here's some holes in your story here. And you know what? Actually, a little bit of yogurt's fine. Actually, I like yogurt. <laughs> I don't. I I'm just... a big yogurt dude. When we went to Italy, our, we went to bread and brec bed and breakfast place. And interesting that I have a bed and brunch place. They did breakfast. Um, and the breakfast came with like plain yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. And so, in Italy, yeah, I know it was weird. I don't think it said Greek on it. Pretty sure it was Greek yogurt. It's all in Italian. Italian? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just straight up like unflavored, no fruit, just yogurt, and it was a hard eat. <laughs> and I think we were the only people. He made he made three tables. Like there's multiple people saying there. I'm pretty sure we we're the only ones saying there. I never heard anybody else come out to eat. No, I never heard anyone else at all. But he set up, and I was like, well, now I can't just leave food here. So I'm like forcing myself to eat plain yogurt and it's like this is kind of gross this is weird also he wouldn't take no he's like do you want coffee i was like no he's like uh cappuccino i was like no he's like uh coffee <laughs> and i was like give me a cappuccino and then i, I muscled saying, through no, it no no thank you well he also gave us a tiny the smallest thing of water we received the entire trip and then he didn't ever refill it <laughs> yeah what you don't understand, Erica, is as a guy, sometimes if you tell a guy no on drink orders, he might come out and shoot you. Women just don't get that about guys and guys. It's true. During women's, international women's month. Let me just Fuck double this check to see if that's true. This is actually April. April Fool's Day. Please, please, please don't be true. This has all been a joke. I, well, I'm struggling so hard to get to my calendar. Um, let's gotta be see smarter here. than what you're working with, this Josh. This comes out on the. It does come out on April first. <laughs> <laughs> Quick math. So stupid. Uh, All of you suck. Here's the next story from Ellen. Am the I, generous? No, otherwise. Page the no. generous. Did you say the generous or the generous? <laughs> I did just dead, na dead name somebody off of word association, so I am sorry uh, for Elliot. But Ellen the Generous is very funny. <laughs> That's very funny. I'm not even going to lie to you. I didn't know who you were talking about. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I've I've completely forgotten. And now, their whoa, do you life. know? There you have it. <laughs> you did it so perfectly the first time that you tried to do that, and the second time was was definitely a miss, boys. That's getting cut out <laughs> for sure. Sure. Anywho, Ellen says, well, this isn't her story. She sent it to me. But anyway, uh, am I the asshole for filing charges against my roommate and suing her for my hospital bill? Kind of crazy that Ellen still has roommates at her level of success. Excuse me. Well, yeah, are, is Ellen married? Portia? Yeah. Is, are they married or are they just like together? Like maybe that's. I don't know. Not, I'm pretty sure they're married. Like they're fighting. So it's just mm. demoted to roommate stage right now. <laughs> Like, sometimes me and Aurora are roommates. More, okay. More than, you know, housemates. Does she know that? No. Oh, she's the one who says it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her. This happened several years ago. I don't know why we're writing about it now, but sure. Legal legal cases? You couldn't talk about it until... <laughs> oh, maybe. Uh, I was 20 female and in college. I was living with my two best friends. 
One of them was moving out so that she could move in with her boyfriend. I placed an ad looking for another roommate. That's how I met Erin. Before she moved in, she informed me that she was vegetarian, but she wouldn't have a problem if other roommates weren't. She moved into our apartment a month later. The next day she moved in, the next day after she moved in, she cooked breakfast for us. I was surprised. We didn't ask her to, and by her own words, she just wanted to do something nice. She had made pancakes, bacon strips, and hash browns. I... Uh, I already see where this is going. Where do you think it's going? They're going to eat breakfast together, and it's going to be nice. Is that where it's going? I mean, undercooked bacon, health issues related to undercooked bacon, lawsuit, ending of a friendship. Who's who's vegetarian here? Aaron, were you even listening? The person cooking the food? Yes. Never mind, I don't know where it's going. I am deathly allergic to a few things. So I immediately asked her what was in the food. Going now. But I didn't mention my allergies. Parentheses, huge mistake. She listed the ingredients and I didn't find anything I was allergic to edit to add she told me it was regular bacon not that it was fake bacon or that it had soy I, oh. I started eating and everything tasted a little off i try the bacon and definitely something is wrong at this point she does a ta-da and smugly told us i bet it tastes exactly like meat it doesn't smugly is just an adjective not a name of somebody <laughs> Like that third roommate's name is Smugly? <laughs> the J.R.R. Tolkien roommate. I am freaking out now. I told her that I am severely allergic to soy and asked her whether there was any soy. Now she's apologizing and says she didn't know and that she is sorry she lied and blah blah. I'm experiencing anaphylactic shock. Throat closing up, dizzy, the works. My best friend freaks out and calls an ambulance. I had to stay in the hospital for two days. Wow. With the U.S. healthcare system and an ambulance, my hospital stay racked up a lot of money, money that I don't have. Might be the only time I'm upset that we don't get to say British. Mm. In the meantime, I also filed a complaint with the police. Food tampering is a felony. Ah. I had a lucky break. My best friend had filmed the breakfast to post it on Insta Insta Instagram, and she got the whole thing on video. In the end, Aaron had to plead guilty to some low degree of felony. Wow. She didn't get any jail time, but got community service. Once she was found guilty, I sued her for the hospital fees, and I won that too. I did all the legal things under the advice of my uncle's friend, who's a lawyer. Kevin O'Leary. He said something about how it will be easy to sue if she had a guilty charge. I also did not have any contact with Aaron during any of this under the advice of my lawyer. Aaron's scholarship was canceled and she had to drop out. <sighs> she also went into debt paying my medical fees. Yeah. I saw her on Facebook a few days ago and she is still down on her luck. I guess a that's felony... Not, that's not luck. You, she didn't happen into that. You sued her. Yeah. You can't chalk that up to a roll of the dice. Huh, that was an crazy. active decision you did. Oh, huh, crazy. I gave this person a felony and then made them have to pay me back. <laughs> and they can't, so they somehow can't get on their feet. A felony drop out of school, mid school, a crippling medical debt repayment. Man, yeah, she just can't quite get the bootstraps pulled out from underneath her. <laughs> I guess a felony charge makes it very hard, no matter how small a charge was. I guess. It's felony. I know she's the asshole for lying about the food. I want to know whether I'm the asshole for everything I did after. Because bottom line is, I basically screwed a person's life up because they put wrong ingredients on breakfast that they only made to do something nice. You took it too far. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sorry. That's too far. I don't... Would your health insurance sue them or something? Uh, how does... That's how car insurance and shit works, right? Does health insurance work that no, way? No. I don't think so. They wouldn't actively try to... I don't think so. I have no if idea. If I fell and hurt my bot, like, hurt myself... Where? Who, what? Like, if... I don't know. At a friend's house. Their, their homeowner's insurance. Covers it? Okay. Yeah. That's okay. why That's why my parents don't let me have a freaking trampoline. Yeah, in case the fuckers. neighborhood kids came over and broke their shit. That's Literally exactly. same. Yep, same. Now I don't. I guess I don't know. This could just be one of those things that parents told us. 
they all collectively got together and <laughs> yeah. said, all right, we'll tell them this. Yeah. Insurance for the trampoline, red water for the pee in the pool. Yeah, right. I don't know. I feel as listen, I, I, I dated somebody for uh, multiple years who had a severe allergy. And uh, it's especially if you have a severe allergy. Like uh, you could die. It is. It is definitely something like I don't know how that. And not to put the blame on you, because obviously it's fucked up that she just gave you food. Like, she was wrong. Yeah. But it's also insane from every experience I've had with people who have severe food allergies for you to put something in your body without, like, divulging. Like, by the way, I have a mm-hmm. very severe blank allergy. Because mm-hmm. I know my ex, when we were at work, like, people would make baked goods and be like, don't worry, I didn't use anything nuts, that, like anything like that. But she still wouldn't eat it. Yeah. yeah. Because you just don't know because people forget shit. And well, there's right. cross-contamination. Yeah. And, say, and Most baking goods say that they're like produced or manufactured in a facility that has nuts and stuff with it. So, And also this, if you went and you already asked for the ingredients at one mm-hmm. point, you don't think you would say what your specific allergy is? I think I would say yeah. my specific allergy. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't want to put too much blame on her. No, they're wrong. <laughs> they're a bad person. But, it, it do, but, like, at what point, it's so strange to now have remorse about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you didn't go through that entire process at all and be like, uh, my shady uncle is kind of giving me fucked up advice here. Yeah. Uh, uncle's you- friend. Uncle's friend. He uncle's friend. Are you ready for the edit? Uh Uh-oh. You guys are bitching like as if I wrote the law on food tampering or like I was the PP police person who decided (laughs) what charges to file. There's no way. (laughs) There's no way it's police person. It's such a commonly used phrase that we've decided to shorten it to PP. I do do love that though. Private prosecutor maybe? Maybe. Um public prosecutor i don't know yeah who decided what charges to file or like as if i was the judge jury that gave the verdict this is a snore fest throwing the throwaway account you guys can keep whining all you want but that doesn't change the verdict before anybody gets upset with us because you had a cousin who's severely allergic this story is 95 percent made up like 95 percent. this person sucks yeah not only that but like yes this person sucks for tampering with the food and yes, you could have died and blah, blah, blah. But to take it as far as you did is insane. It's, yeah. And yeah. then to post it on the internet and be like, am I the asshole for this? And when everybody's like, yeah, you fucking suck. And then you're going to call everyone a little bitch. Like, come on. Also, couldn't you have requested for a lighter charge? Why are you like, oh, there's nothing I could do about it. And it's like, I'm pretty sure you were the one yeah. in charge of what's happening. The- I also want to know, did you still live with, like, you have a lease. Yeah. So did you still have to live with them for? Well, they couldn't afford rent, so they had to move out. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, they said they didn't speak with her at all. So I wonder if, I mean, if that person was getting sued, if she spoke with a lawyer, then that lawyer would have told her to move out, right? And, like, not speak with the person as well. I guess. The attitude she gave it, they gave at the end there is exactly the attitude I would expect out of someone that's, like, sue happy. Yeah. Yeah. We're not talking about the dinosaur. Sue does make me happy. Um, We should take Olsen to see Sue. I bet he'd love it. He would. He'd point and be like, wow. He's it's really a sick, into dinosaurs right now. When's the last right time now? you've been to the uh, Field Museum? <sighs> the new suit. From when we were in college. Oh, There's a know. new suit? N- well, you didn't let me finish. We went when we were in college yeah, with my did. mom and her, her boyfriend. I forgot about that. Yeah, me too. Um, your mom's never introduced me to any of her boyfriends, so it's kind of fucked up. He didn't. That was act- the only she one. did not consider him a boyfriend, even though we went on this like family day trip. She's going to kill me for even bringing he this up. He for sure thought they were going out. For sure. He brought his kids. She brought her two kids. Like, it was a whole thing. But the, they weren't dating. Well, she didn't want to spoil him. Mm. Mm. Um, They built a, like, full-on Sue, like, backroom exhibit with, like, Sue's actual uh, skull. Because they have, Sick. like, the one that was in the main thing, you know, was just a plaster case. Yeah. They have, like, the actual skull. It's fucking awesome. That's sick. That is pretty cool. And they cool. have little buttons you can push to, like, hear. Rawr. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> hey, and I've met the person who 
freaking ran the Sue Twitter account. Hey, and I've listened to so. the podcast oh. about it, okay? Who is it? I don't know if this information was supposed to be public or not. Because my speech teacher in college was the like docent for Sue. The huh? A docent. It's like a... Don't say docent like I'm supposed to know what it means. And then repeat it like I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> it I... is the volunteer that like... She, she helps them give birth or something? No, that's a doula. Anyway, uh, it's the person that knows stuff at the museum and can answer the questions. An expert. Why are they called a docent? I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Get us out of here. You have okay. I yeah, I can. Do you need to? It's up to you. No, do you need to? Like, is it one that you gotta read? Yeah, it's. Oh, I say, all I have to read all of them. They're so good. That's why I have them screenshot. But if you don't, well, if you don't want me to read it, I don't have to read it right now. I can read it on my next episode. How how well is it going to be received on TikTok before it dies? I don't know. I haven't read it. Hey, hey that's a oh. weekly bonus episode. All you lovely <laughs> listeners, please go subscribe to us on Patreon. One dollar gets you into gets you the ad free episodes, gets you into our Discord. Five dollars monthly bonus episode. Ten dollars. Weekly, weekly bonus, bonus episode. episode. <laughs> Anyways, you can find us on the internet wherever you're at. We're probably there too. Uh, if if you want to send us stories, you can do that at judgespot at gmail dot com or listener submitted sounds, circle George ideas, whatever you want to send us, just send it on over. And if you want to send us mail, you can do that at PO Box fifty eight, Ottawa, Illinois six one three five zero. Okay, goodbye. We love you. I sprained my wrist ha- last week at volleyball, so waving just now actually kind of. Happy hurt. April Fool's Day! Play a joke on somebody. That sucks. Yeah. I rolled my ankle. Somebody said whenever I have an injury, you also have an injury. So I'm glad. Is that wild? I'm sure. I'm glad it happens in reverse that I rolled my ankle a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. Mine was last Sunday. Bye. The judges love you.